very dialogue he episode, but it's clear they focused more on this than the League. But that doesn't mean it was bad. It was actually good, as I w I've already suggested before. <laughs> Pokemon! 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 Hello everyone, I'm Dustin Benzel, and welcome to another Pokemon X, Y, and Z anime discussion. Today we're going to talk about the most recent episode of Pokemon X, Y, and Z, which of course is the Team Flare Attacks Lumios episode, which is after the conclusion to the Kalos League, and of course there's all those vines going on to destroying or whatever. Now, I did watch some translations of this episode, but it was so grammatically incorrect, like someone obviously doesn't know how to speak English, trying to put it in English, just... So, of course, if anything I say is wrong, I apologize. I don't really trust that those translations very well. I don't know why they were so grammatically incorrect. You know, it, it's just a weird thing. So anyway, now I really don't want to bring up the league, but there's just one note that I want to say, and that's pretty much it. This episode, based on its, uh, based on how it how it went, either it was the writer's preferences or something more specific, but this episode made it very clear that Ash wasn't going to win the league. And I say that because if you recall from my discussion in, in response to the outcome of the league, I did say that it didn't feel like Ash's league and it made no sense because there was nothing leading up to Ash winning and as I said it would only benefit Ash. This particular episode made it clear why that wasn't the case because the one important thing is we got a lack of cameos for the league. We got some obvious ones that were already in the already at the tournament already, and the only real cameos we have were like Gudra's friends and Keenan, I believe is his name. <laughs> there will be a text in case I said that wrong. And but in this particular episode, we actually got real cameos that we probably should have gotten during the Kalos League or whatever, and we didn't. We we saw a lot of people. We saw all the gym leaders, as well as Alexa. So Alexa wasn't there for the tournament because she was with her sister. I I don't know if that makes any sense. I don't know if it makes any sense that Alexa would be with her sister during the Kalos League. Or they're like, their sisters, Alexa wasn't in Lumio City, let's just put her here. So I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. So, yeah, it, it, it really made it clear that Ash wasn't going to win the Kalos League because there were no relevant cameos that would make it seem like Ash was going to win. If we see cameos, like if Delia and Oak show up, and we see like Brock and all those cameos in the thing. I'm I'm pretty sure that would point to Ash winning the league. And if he gets into the finals again, and we see all these cameos, and even like Misty or Brock actually come to watch Ash's tournament, chances are he's going to win. Because there's no way that they would put that much effort of having all these past characters watching Ash's league finales or whatever if it wasn't going to win. That's all I want to say, blah, 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 let's move on. So like I said, this episode was really good, just as expected. It They, they did put more effort into the Team Flare arc than they did the league. That might be because Tomioka, the head writer of the series, decided to write only about the Team Flare arc, and it was just a bunch of other people that wrote the Kalos League, so that might explain why. I, there may have been one League episode, maybe, that Tomioka wrote, but I'm not really sure on that. Probably not. I, I don't expect that to be the case. So, yeah, this was a very interesting episode. I liked it. It started with a quick synopsis, Ash and Alon coming from the tournament. They run into Serena, Clement, and Bonnie. They're trying to find Marin because 
Alon didn't know she was there. And Ash is like, oh, yeah, Marin's here. Uh, she wanted to say, she wanted to wish you good luck in the league, but she didn't want to bother you until afterwards. And, of course, they're looking for Marin. So Serena, Kalant, and Bonnie go their separate way to reach Prism Tower because that's the core of where everything's at. And, of course, we see all the characters before. We see Sawyer with Shauna, Tierno, Trevor, their attacking the vines of course because the vines are attacking puny chan is turning into 10 percent form to reach the prism tower now some people were s skeptical uh, what what word was that skeptical about zygarde 10 percent running to the prism tower because you would think that it would be there really fast however what they don't take into consideration is that zygarde 10 percent may have the, had to deal with the vines you know attacking the vines or dodging the vines and that probably definitely would have taken some time so anyway alan and ash meet up with marin uh, they're a little bit marin's a little bit happy to see alan and of course they're attacking the vines charizard pikachu iron tail uh, dragon claw it doesn't work it, and then, of course, it, uh, then I think we saw Sycamore by himself wondering what's going on and thinking about the prophecy that Olympia foretold. Uh, the champion Diantha was saving someone out there. And then it cuts back to Alon and Ash at some point, and they're still trying to attack. But uh, let's see, I think it was Celosia, the purple haired girl. You see, Bryony's uh, green. Mabel is blue and Oleon is orange, so I'm thinking it was Celosia with Drapion. Celosia shows up and reveals that Alon is kind of like colleagues with them, with Team Flare, or helping with like Puny Chan or whatever the dialogue said. The Like I said, the translations were not helpful. They were not helpful at all. There was nothing I could discern in the horrible translations that I saw that would make any sense for why Ash is like, huh? You're working with them? Huh? It was just awkward, but I'm assuming Celosia said something that made it seem like Alon was like working with them or whatever, and Ash was like, what? I don't believe it. He tries to grab Alon to get them away, get, get them all away from Celosia, but Alon pulls back and he's like, in his own little world, like, what is going on right now. So then, of course, Celosia has Drapion using some attack. Confuse Ray, Hypnosis, I'm really not sure what move it is, because whatever it is, it doesn't make any sense why Ash and Pikachu would fall asleep, unless it was Hypnosis, which obviously would make sense, but Confuse Ray causing them to fall asleep? Uh, sure, why not? So anyway, Ash is captured, and then we cut over to, I believe... Uh, back to Clement and everyone, and they're attacking the vines, and then Clembot shows up with Heliolus, and then, of course, Blaziken Mask, or Meyer shows up with Mega Blaziken. They're going on and forth. They need to go to the Prism Tower. Meanwhile, Zygarde 10% is trying to contact uh, the 50% form. Blue Zygarde Core is 50% form. It's not working because that one is red and not... And, mind controlled I guess that that one I, I I don't think they really explained exactly what happened to Blue Zygarde Core I don't know if they tortured it so much that they forced it they somehow forced it to become 50% form and that's why it's red but it otherwise just doesn't make any sense I don't know if I missed something if you know what happened feel free to tell me in the comment section below so of course uh, Alon is in the like the helicopter. They're all like confused. Marin at some point gets in trouble with the team flare. I think this was more around the time. Oh, oh, of course, I forgot the big part. That's where it was. So, Team Rocket, or else more specifically, Jesse, she she takes over to Malva and discusses the news because Malva's like, "What's going on? It what what is happening?" She's like really confused confused as to why. What, what's happening is Lysander's business. So she leaves, Jesse takes over, and then at some point Lysander comes in and makes a huge speech or whatever. 
the horrible translation said something about making the world beautiful by getting rid of all the evilness that the world has to offer because humans are horrible creatures apparently they don't deserve to live something like that <laughs> and so of course then i think that's when marin gets in trouble with the team flare grunt sycamore shows up uses garchomp to deflect uh, the grunt scorupi then of course marin and sycamore run away let's see and then it like cuts to alon being very upset talking about zerosic talking to Zerosic about something about Ash, why did they capture Ash, what's so important about Ash, or what's going on. Then Alon talks about Lysander. Uh, Alon is like really confused as to what's going on. I really have no idea what's going to happen in the next episodes in regards to Alon, since the previews didn't reveal all that much about Alon, which is very interesting. I don't know if he gets to Marin and just protects her and... We see Mega Charizard X deflecting all these vines, or maybe Alon and Sycamore and Marin go to Chespy and save Chespin, maybe? I don't know. We just didn't get a whole lot. However, there is something about Sycamore, but I'll save that to the preview for next episode as we also talk about the arc. So then afterwards, at some point, uh, something is done, and Lysander looks up, and of course, Ash is being brought up, and you, it, we got a really cool scene of Ash being tied up or whatever, or held up by these spheres, as well as his Pokemon. You know, it's a very strong moment uh, of the episode, and of course, cutting back to Zygarde 10% real quick, it has a miniature moment with Zygarde 50% form where they collide with Dragon Pulses. Obviously 50% is stronger and knocks it to the ground. And at the, and also just to know, it seems like Bonnie has this connection with uh, Puni-Chan because it knew when it became Zygarde 10% and could know that it was falling as a result of the Dragon Pulse attack, uh, reverting it back to the Zygarde core that it once was. And then eventually there was a scene where Puny Chan comes up and absorbs a lot more of those cells to become 50% form. And everyone who knows Puny Chan realizes that Puny Chan is Zygarde. So that's a very interesting moment that happens. And of course, the episode basically ends with them colliding. And that was pretty much the episode. Like I said, it was very dialogue heavy, but it was still amazing. They really showed off the peril of the city. Like I said, they really put a lot of effort. Like it was ex like it was expected. It was like this is the real end of the series climax, you know. And I'm kind of disappointing that they didn't do that for the league. But I guess they just wanted the league to get over with because you know they had other things that they wanted to do at the end of the series. If they if they pushed the league until after. Team Flare, then there might be only a couple more episodes, but there might be more time to finish off the X, Y, and Z series if they do the Team Flare arc after the League and so on and so forth. So that's pretty much it, and I think I want to talk about this episode. Like I said, it, it, they really did put a lot of effort, and I feel like this is going to be the best evil organization team that we've gotten ever in Pokemon better than Team Rocket, whatever that was, in the first and second generations, I believe. And then, of course, better than Team Magma and Team Magma and Aqua. A lot of people did not like those two episodes in regards to Groudon and Kyogre. So far, I think Team Galactic would be the current best. Uh, because of how it played out, and it was very interesting. There was a lot of nice moments in regards to Team Galactic, and then that ended. Uh, not really sure what to think of Team Plasma. I guess it was something. It was better than nothing. I think maybe it was better than the Team Magma Aqua episodes, but I'm not really sure how much, since they only focused on Reshiram, and even though we saw Zekrom, you know, th there was no QRM or anything of that nature. That was a weird arc. And then we get run into Team Flare, which is now, and I feel like it's going to be very good. 
So, of course, let's move on from there and talk about the next episode. The next episode is definitely interesting because we get some really interesting things. I, I forget, I, I didn't get to see what Pokenechi says, which it would already be out the Pokenechi preview for the episode. But we saw in the preview of TV Tokyo that released it, we saw Ash and Greninja being forced into Ash Greninja. At least that particular concept, that's what it looks like because it looked like from the same scene we saw from the versus Diantha or whatever. So, or maybe they're trying to make it work so that Ash Greninja is strong enough to break free so he can break free of everyone. At this particular point, I don't know what's going to happen when all of Ash's Pokemon are released. I hope they have roles in this episode since Gudra is still with Ash, so it'd be nice if Gudra did something. Noivern did something, considering they did absolutely nothing in the league. So I guess that'll be interesting to see what's going to happen there. In the in the preview, we also saw Mega Garchomp. Now, the only Mega Garchomp that we absolutely know of is, of course, Sycamore, because we saw Sycamore's Garchomp evolve, Mega Evolve into Mega Garchomp. So it seems like Sycamore is going to use Mega Garchomp. Also, in the previews for the Team Flare arc in general, we also saw shiny Mega Metagross, which means Steven Stone is going to appear at some point in this particular arc, which is nice because they've been a little lacking. Makes me wonder if they're going to have Ash and Steven recognize each other or they just completely retcon Steven Stone from, its, from his appearance in the Hoenn region because that one was just, he was just like a mysterious trainer, I believe, in the... Hoenn region rather than the champion of the Hoenn region. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see if they recognize each other or what's going to happen with that. We saw in other previews, we saw Ash Greninja fighting Pikachu, Lysander with a Meg Mega Gyarados, shiny Mega Gyarados, which is pretty neat. I, I don't know if they're just doing it to make be unique and not just have Mega Gyarados because Lance does have a shiny Gyarados in second generation and third generation it was the thing he caught the the one that uh team rocket forced to evolve as a connection with the games where they forced magikarp to evolve and that's why it had that shiny red coloring in it and it introduced the concept of shiny pokemon to us in the games and they did it in the anime and lance caught it so but of course we did see a shiny magikarp and, of course, shiny uh, Pokemon do evolve into their shiny of all forms. So I'm guessing that they just wanted to be a little bit more unique than just a regular Mega Gyarados. So it's definitely interesting that that's what we're going to see. So I don't think there's anything else I need to discuss in regards to this. I don't think there's any new titles. There is a break after the one-hour special, as I thought. So it, so it cuts out one episode, one week at least of no Pokemon X, Y, and Z, so of course we're getting really close to the end of the anime series, at least in this particular generation. Sun and Moon anime will probably come out very soon, sometime in November. I'm eagerly awaiting previews for that because I just want to know what the previews for that is going to be. Are they going to make it unique and interesting? Are they going to reveal interesting Pokemon? Is Ash going to get a picky peck or whatever? What are the traveling companions? I'm actually surprised they're not going to say anything, but I guess we'll just have to wait until September. I think that's when they really will introduce Sun and Moon anime. So that's pretty much all I got to say in regards to the Pokemon X, Y, and Z series. I'm really, I'm probably going to enjoy this arc, even though I wish the league was just as good as the Team Flare climax or whatever. So it's very interesting. So anyway, I think that's all I have to say. So thank you for watching. I'm Dustin Menzel, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.